If you've ever drank tea in your life, chances are you've had an experience with a tea bag in one way or another. This is the most common way to consume tea around the world, but you may notice that we don't use them in any of our videos. There are five main reasons for this, and in this video, we're gonna break down each one. Let's go through the five reasons not to use a tea bag. Before we get started, if you're new to the channel, it would really mean a lot if you could like this video and subscribe to our channel. We have hundreds of videos on all sorts of topics related to Japanese green tea, but for this episode, we're gonna focus on tea bags specifically. Without further ado, let's get started. Started. Reason number one not to use a tea bag low quality leaves. The first and most important reason not to use a tea bag is that they tend to use incredibly low quality tea leaves. These are the leftover leaves and stems from the tea production process that contain less nutrients and flavor. When we visited the farm of Satoen in Shizuoka, we learned about this practice. When high quality teas are being produced, the impurities are removed with a series of machines. The farmers explain that these impurities are often sold to companies that will use them in tea bags. I'm glad to know that things aren't being wasted, but I personally don't want to be the one to drink it. High quality Japanese loose leaf tea is made out of the fresh sprouts of the tea plant. They are also made from the first harvest that occurs in the early springtime. During the winter, the tea plant stores up nutrients from the soil and then releases them into the fresh sprouts in March or April. Once these are picked, they can be regenerated but with a lower nutrient density. This is why the first harvest is so sought after and it produces a sweeter and more complex tea. A farmer can then harvest the tea plant a second, third, or even fourth time, but the flavor will decrease each time. The later harvests are much less sought after, so they are used to make cheaper teas like those used in tea bags and bottled teas. Reason number two not to use a tea bag, smaller cut. Let's imagine you were to use high quality tea leaves in a tea bag. To be fair, there are varying degrees of quality within tea bags, with some using better quality leaves than others. In order to fit the leaves comfortably inside the tea bag, they will need to be cut down to a smaller size. This cutting down of the tea leaves increases the surface area and causes them to deteriorate faster. It also removes a lot of the essential oils from the leaf. The essential oils are the volatile components within the tea leaf that give it a complex flavor and aroma. This is one of the reasons why when you drink high quality loose leaf tea, you get multiple layers of flavor and aroma while a tea bag only has one layer of flavor to it. We describe tea bags as having a flat flavor, which means they really only go in one direction. You can't really have an engaging drinking experience with a tea bag. It's just more about the convenience. Because the tea leaves need to be cut in order to put into a tea bag, producers are reluctant to use their best quality leaves for tea bags. It's better to just prepare them in typical loose leaf form with nothing but a clay teapot and water. Reason number three not to use a tea bag less space for the leaves to expand. Now let's pretend we take some high quality tea leaves and place them perfectly into a tea bag without cutting them. As we mentioned before, this would likely never happen, but let's just imagine for a second. The leaves would be cramped inside the tea bag and not have enough space to expand. The reason why Japanese green teas are tightly rolled into these needle-like shapes is to lock in the flavor until the tea is ready to be infused. When you add water to these leaves, they expand and release their full flavor into the infusion. If the leaves are cramped inside a smaller space, they are not able to expand fully and some of the flavor remains locked inside the leaf. This is why we recommend using a teapot over a strainer, because the teapot provides a lot of space for the leaves to move around and open up as they infuse. The strainer really cramps the leaves together and makes it difficult for them to open up. Whether you use a strainer or a teapot, it's better than a tea bag, which provides the least amount of space for the leaves. Reason number four not to use a tea bag, other additives. Even if you were to make the perfect tea bag, with high quality leaves, completely uncut, and placed perfectly inside a giant tea bag that lets them expand, you still run into a final problem, which is the tea bag itself. The material used to make a tea bag can vary, and we have seen tea bags containing paper, plastic, metal, glue, and string. All of these are interfering with the flavor of your cup of tea. If you were to take the leaves out of a tea bag and just brew the bag itself, you'd likely get a very off-putting flavor. This is the same thing that is happening in your tea when you brew it. You just might be used to it. A major benefit to brewing loose leaf tea is the simplicity of it. All you are using is just leaves and water. There is some contact with the clay teapot, but some would argue that this can even accentuate the flavor of the tea. We haven't even gotten into the waste that is produced by the tea bag. Every two grams of tea is individually wrapped inside a tea bag, and some tea bags even come in bags themselves, making them even more wasteful. When you are finished brewing loose leaf tea, you can simply compost it after and return the leaves back to the earth. You don't have to worry about the plastics and dyes from the tea bag going into your teacup or into a landfill. Reason number five not to use tea bags. No additional steepings. Finally, we come to the last reason, and that is that you can't really use tea bags multiple times. Tea bags are meant to infuse very quickly into water, and that's one of the reasons they are ground into such small pieces. The hot water quickly extracts all the flavor at once, and then the tea bag is meant to be thrown away. Of course, you can use the tea bag a second time, but the flavor will be very minimal. Loose leaf teas, on the other hand, can be brewed three, four, even five times. The flavor evolves from brewing to brewing, as different layers of taste and aroma are extracted 
from the leaf. Some even prefer the flavor of this second brewing, saying that the tea becomes more powerful. This also helps to disprove the myth that loose leaf tea is expensive. While you may pay around $1 for 5 grams of tea, that tea can be used to make 4 to 5 cups. So for the cost of just a few cents, you can have a super green and flavorful cup of tea. Some teas like Bancha, Genmaicha, and Hojicha are even cheaper, giving you a great entry point into the world of high quality Japanese green tea. I hope you've all found this video helpful. If you enjoy tea bags, that's no problem. Just make sure that you're comparing them to loose leaf tea to see if you notice a difference. Once you take the plunge and switch to loose leaf tea, you will not only notice a difference in taste, but also in variety. With loose leaf tea, there are thousands of different types to choose from, varying based on region, production style, and growing conditions. This gives you much better options than the standard green and black tea bags you see at the store. If you would like to try a few different types of teas and see which ones you like the most, you can try out one of our samplers. Many of the samplers even come with the proper teaware so you can get everything you need to start preparing delicious cups of Japanese green tea at home. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Until then, we'll see you next time.